to another edition of Moral Side of the News. We're glad you're alongside today. I'm John Blinn with the WHAS Crusade for Children. On this week's program, the president of Mexico calls Arizona's new immigration law discriminatory. And who will pay, uh, excuse me, who will pay for the cleanup of the growing oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico and BP? We'll discuss these topics with our distinguished panel here on Moral Side of the News. Father Tony Smith, Holy Spirit Catholic Church. Dr. Kevin Smith, Watson Memorial Baptist Church. Dr. Greg Earwood, Baptist Seminary of Kentucky. Rabbi Joe Rooks Rapport at the Temple. And Dr. John Slider, United Methodist Church. State visits to the White House, like the recent one with Mexican President Felipe Calderon, are supposed to be carefully choreographed. But the uncomfortable topic of immigration, and specifically the new Arizona law, kept becoming the topic. Here's more from Mark Mullen of ABC News. Taking lawmakers to task in their own house, Mexico's president, Felipe Calderon, politely but clearly told Congress that Arizona's anti-immigrant crackdown is heavy-handed and no substitute for comprehensive immigration reform at the national level. And to turn this phenomenon into a legal order and secure flows of workers and visitors. Mexico's president also sending a poignant message in Spanish and English to Mexican workers in the U.S. illegally. As we admire them, we miss them. We are doing the best that we can do in order to reduce migration. Calderon conceded many are leaving to avoid the rampant border violence among drug cartels, saying an unprecedented amount of Mexican resources are now fighting organized crime. But Calderon also called out Congress, drawing a direct correlation between the surge in border violence and the lapse of the U.S. ban on assault weapons in 2004. Thousands are ending up in the hands of criminals. That statement drew a rousing ovation from Democrats, but not from Republicans. Later. In fact, one Texas Republican congressman said it was inappropriate for Mexico's president to lecture Americans on their laws. But despite the criticism, Felipe Calderon made his point. Mark Mullen for ABC News. So now on to our panel for the discussion today. We'll start with Kevin Smith. Kevin, what are your thoughts on this immigration law, the president of Mexico, and all the commentary? Disgusting. Um, our image has really changed. We, uh, justly or unjustly, our previous president was criticized for being a cowboy, but I think America had a certain image in the world, and certainly with our neighbors in this hemisphere. And uh, this president has such softness and diplomacy about him that obviously uh, President of Mexico has no problem coming in here and lecturing us on our laws, criticizing the state for exercising its own sovereignty to protect its borders. Um, and then the Attorney General and the Department of Homeland Security. I, I just think we're in a bad international place. Uh, how do we, how do a person feels about uh, President Obama on his domestic agenda and liking that or disliking that. Uh, I think internationally we're just in a bad place and that, that is a terrible picture. Terrible picture. I can't imagine a president not responding except, oh, he's saying the same thing the critic is saying. Terrible picture. You know, I, I, if it, I was, if, what that brought to mind first off was uh, Representative Rangel a few years ago when uh, some uh, foreign dignitary came back and was uh, hassling President Bush or criticizing uh, President Bush. And uh, Representative Congressman Rangel was no great fan of President Bush, but he took the visiting dignitary to task. He said, you don't mess with my president. And, and um, uh, you know, it, 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 you want to come to our country, <laughs> you behave yourself, in other words. So I, I, um, I'm, I'm struck. I, I will say, though, that President Calderon has uh, probably saved uh, uh, our country some money. Uh, President Obama no longer has to travel outside the country to apologize for uh, America. So, uh, in a sense, there is something good de developing. Uh, and uh, President Calderon is uh, consistent with the uh, Attorney General. He probably hasn't read the bill either. Uh, so uh, the reactions to that Arizona bill have been so overblown, so um, 
uh, inappropriate and incorrect. Uh, for anybody who's read the bill and compared it to the federal uh, statutes that President Obama uh, has said that he would enforce um, by becoming president, uh, it ju it's just bizarre the way the politics are falling out on this. That's what he's provoked about, because Arizona is doing what the federal government has refused to do. Exactly. If the federal government is doing what the laws say do right now, Arizona would not have to take these steps. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a joke. Well, I'm in agreement with uh, someone coming in and uh, ripping apart uh, what's taking place as an outsider. Um, you know, truth comes from lots of places. And uh, while I wish he had had private conversation, and uh, if he wanted to entertain it, I suppose that's happened, uh, dialogue about it. Uh, nevertheless, I think some legitimate concerns have been raised. Um, I'm uh, really unclear, and somebody, I'm welcome a civic lesson here about the role of states in relationship to federal government and how that works on immigration laws. Um, I'm not sure that... Uh, and I think the federal government does need to be addressing this, and uh, I am concerned about the potential for laws, immigration laws in Arizona uh, being problematic. Uh, and, I mean, it already is in, in some sense, but I, I don't know enough about civic government. I've, you know, that's been a few years ago since I was in class. But uh, my, my, my basic point is I do think there are some things that we need to be discussing and I, I think those are being discussed, and, and in one sense, I guess the President of Mexico has just highlighted those issues. What is the purpose of uh, foreign dignitary coming into this country and addressing Congress? Why does he do that, or she do that? It's not to say, hello, thank you for letting me come. It's to say, we have relationships with you, and you are the governing part of the governing body of this country. And here are some difficulties, and we need to work on these. Now, granted, I would say he could possibly have phrased it differently, but I have no difficulty with him taking us to task. Uh, the drug we saw in the news clip, uh, the biggest, one of the biggest difficulties he's facing in his own country is the drug lords, et cetera. Where does the majority of that stuff come to this country? Uh, if it did not come to this country, he would not have half the difficulty he has. That is an issue for him and his people. Uh, the guns. Uh, again, I own weapons. I hunt. I would, do not want to see guns taken away from people, etc. But at the same time, uh, you know, if I go deer hunting, I don't need uh, an automatic weapon that puts 25 holes in the body of a deer. You know, a single clip. Uh, there, there, there are issues. I, my point is, I think he has a right if he's asked to address Congress to say, here's some difficulties, King. Now, how he says it, okay, we can argue there. That. Um, but the whole point of uh, our relationship with the world, Kevin, I would disagree. Uh, that, uh, I'm one of the ones that thought the, the previous president was a cowboy. Uh, a John Wayne mentality of foreign policy never works. It hasn't worked. Uh, you say, uh, apologizing. Uh, I, I know your slight comment, John. But at the same time, uh, President Bush has done some things when he was in office that would, you know, holding hands with the, you know, never mind, we'll go there, uh, with foreign dignitaries. The whole thing of you know, the relationship with this country and the rest of the world right now is positive, more positive now than it has been in the past. And I don't fault the president for saying, if we have been in the wrong, we have been in the wrong. Uh, to come out in reality. Now, the, to me, that's not a weakness, that's a strength. Could you? But, well, okay, I just wanted you to clarify something you had said earlier. Uh, well, uh, am I hearing you say that all of Mexico's problems are our responsibility? No, so you go, okay. John, you're, well, you were, you were saying you were saying you had listed two things. <laughs> As well, I'm a conservative. I can't understand things. Well, I don't so. know what conservative <laughs> means. You have to find your term. Okay, okay, guys. Figure out, figure out. But anyway, the, uh, the point, again, is uh, I have... Uh, so Mexico has some responsibility for their problems. Absolutely. Okay, sure. and I, I just sure. wanted to sure. a clarity. But if we're going to have a joint venturing here, and that's one of the reasons for these visits, I understand it is, uh, yes, Congress then has the right to say, yeah, Mr. President, you also have problems in your country. Here they are. Okay. Joe would like to chime in.